Okay, for my coilover experiment, I bought a couple years ago this very inexpensive, generic, universal coilover kit. I think they listed older Honda Civics as the application and others. Now, I suppose the worst thing about these is going to be what you're riding on, most of the time, the springs themselves. So, I'm going to just from the start, eliminate those, get rid of all the springs, and buy some springs at the rate I want and from Summit Racing. I don't even know what spring rate these are. All right. So, the other problem. Here is a 280Z front strut. Well, even if you take out the strut insert, these don't slide over. These I hear are perfect for a 240Z front strut, which is a slightly smaller diameter, but the threaded sleeve doesn't work on a 280Z. So, I mean, maybe if you can get slightly larger diameter, that would be fine. So with the retainer nut for this strut removed, these slip over then you could use this or a similar diameter coil on there. Um, you've eliminated, of course, all of your height adjustment, and these are probably going to be much too low. Um, I could use something like that and the spring, but it's an experiment to see exactly where the right correct right height is. So I got these, what are they, 10 inch tall springs from Summit Racing, 225 pound. I'm planning to actually cut off, since I do need to eliminate this for wheel clearance, I'm going to make a cut just above the weld, leaving the weld there. I will then have a ring at the bottom that is also semi held by the weld, or at least it keeps it from slipping down. Um, these go against that, so it'll bring it down a little bit. Now, this strut is collapsed because it's completely worn out and blown, but you bring this down a little bit further, the strut would normally be way up like that anyway. And you're also going to be eliminating some of the ride height by using a lower profile top hat. So this here is a 240Z top hat. So by taking that out, out of the top, you bring the entire strut assembly up without changing your um, travel and bring it down to a very low position with these um, adjustable camber plates, which are really just the top end of your whole coilover assembly. So even with a tall spring here, I'm able to keep the car at the lower right height I'm looking at. The car's not going to be too low, just a couple inches lower than stock. But that's the idea here. These will go on the top. Um, these will need to be drilled out appropriately for the, the strut to go through. That's the idea, anyway. And if it ends up all fitting together, but it's just too tall, um, since this is only on the front that I'm doing, I would simply have to replace these springs. I could buy another pair of springs that are maybe like two inches shorter, whatever I feel. If I go down two inches and that's too low, add another one of these from the other kit to kind of bring it up, whatever that is, half inch. So then I've dropped it effectively an inch and a half instead of two inches. But the first step would be to get these both off the front of my car and cut off this lower ring, the spring perch, and then start fitting everything together and see where we're at. All right, got the strut all removed. Pretty easy. Just took the brake off. Um, you unclip the part that attaches to that little flange on the strut. And without disconnecting it, I probably won't even have to bleed my brakes. As long as there's no leaks. Two bolts on the bottom, everything on the top. And it's a perfect opportunity to replace my ball joints down there, which I will do later.
So here is the completed coil over here. And as you notice, this is not, uh, well, like I said before, I'm not putting this threaded sleeve on there. So this is not a adjustable coil over. It is going to be a one selected height. So that's part of the experiment to see where it rides, whether I can make minor adjustments and have this, the car ride where I want it to, or possibly I need to buy a shorter spring. Um, but here is what I was talking about earlier. Um, I just used a pretty normal angle grinder with a cutting disc and very carefully notched around here, trying not to cut through the actual tube, but just through the outer spring perch here. Um, and then smoothed out the area around here so that this would have a nice raw metal piece to pull it up against. Uh, these clamps here that I got from Fastenal, they are two and one eighth inch. Almost seem a little bit small, but they they fit very snug and then squeeze down. As you can see, there's a little bit of gap, but this is very tight on there. Um, plus in a couple spots, it is resting against some high spots. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. You might even be able to use one that's an eighth of an inch larger diameter, which just gives you a sixteenth on each side. I don't know if it would be tight enough. It, it might, because they're probably made so that there would be a little bit of a gap here so they can squeeze on whatever pipe they're on. So, put that on. Then I just use the lower portion just so that I have this lip here inside for the spring to rest against. Yeah. The spring sits in there like that. And then you put on the top. Now in my case, the nut for the top of the strut is a little big, so you have to actually take this out before putting this on and off, but not really a big deal. Now up here at the top, you've got two different widths. I have the top hat, which I did have to drill out both of these because these are kind of universal fit so it rests there on the top edge does not slip all the way down and then I stacked up washers um, and you can see that's the final result so when there's weight on the car it'll compress that and hold it together so the spring um, I think I might even place some of the washers underneath to bring this up further, allowing the overall suspension to be up closer to the top hat. And I think that would actually give me another quarter inch of drop. Still don't even know where it's going to ride at, but I'm getting a feeling now that it's going to be a little too tall. So I'll get a little bit of oil in here, which I don't have yet reassemble this, get this tightened up, um, and then get, get these back on the car, get it on the ground and see where it's at. Oh, and let me show you the specifics on how this is assembled. Okay, so instead of having the top hat first and all the washers on top of it, leading up to adjustable camber plate, I'm going to put it with some washers first. In fact, I'll just leave two washers at the top. That way they can be between the top hat. Assuming that the washers go inside this little notch, which they do. Now this is, this piece sets, you know, inside there. All right, it doesn't go all the way through. So that is, it's going to go on here above that it goes inside the washers a little bit which is how it should work and then that 
should fit down on there. And then this has threads on the inside of it, so it goes in there on the top. All the parts I'm using here, I will include links in the description. Some of these parts can be purchased at multiple places, and I may put two different links. There we go. That's how it'll look. Yep, and I believe that does give it another mm, half inch of drop at the top by rearranging the uh, the washers to be most of them below instead of all of them above right here. And there it is. New ball joint. Metal just cleaned up a bit. Now I'll get the castle nut on there, that tightened down. Put a little bit of lubricant between the metal on the top that might twist when it's under load and turning. this and lift at the same time and twist the ball joint backwards well, oh, there we go put a crescent rinse on the steering knuckle twist it right back no problem snaps in place easy place brake lines back on everything is torqued down except to the top three and when it hangs with no weight on the wheels you have a gap so it has a bit of area to lower so I'll get these put on next <coughs> Okay, I found my lug nuts. Uh, I actually had bought these for my 350Z and then after receiving them realized I really should be using OEM style lug nuts when you're running OEM wheels on Nissans because they have a completely different seat. Um, but these are for aftermarket wheels. They are gold to kind of match the orange of the, the 350Z. So doesn't really go with anything on the 280Z, but I need some lug nuts and these are available, so. Now when I first used this floor jack to lift one tire up until the frames just started to come off the jack stands, uh, that was a flawed way to see about how high the car is going to ride on this coilover setup. What I didn't realize is that I'm actually lifting more of the car's weight with just one side, so they're not sharing the weight across both sides. Uh, because the tire looked so low, I went ahead and made some height adjustments to lift the suspension. And then later when I got it on the ground, it was a bit too high. So it looked like this. This was not low enough. I, I had an idea that I wanted there to be less fender gap here. So then I later had to pull the whole suspension apart again, make some adjustments, 
and then finally dropped it a bit more. So I put a level up to the edge of the rim. On both sides, it shows a little bit of outward lean on the top. So I've actually got positive camber on this. You know, because the camber adjustment I just put in the middle, um, but for some reason, it acts like it's set over here. So it looks like I'm gonna have to do what I've seen in another video, is I'm gonna actually take this down and cut this part out, grinding all the way back, all of the single layer right here. I'll get rid of that, leaving the double layer sheet metal around the outside edge. Um, I'll be able to move this inward and see the adjustments. A little bit of negative camber is great for street use. And besides the camber adjustment, um, after seeing the car on the ground, I think I want to bring it down approximately three quarters of, of an inch. So this is some adjustment I do have on these non-adjustable coilovers. It's a little bit of work though to partially disassemble the suspension just to make adjustments. But the other adjustment is that initially I put one of these in, then later I added the lower part of the lock ring. Now, obviously these are not locking on anything, they're just resting here, but it spaces the whole system up, which lifts the car. So I did lift it a bit. I lifted to the maximum here, and then you saw where the car rides. It is lower than stock, it's just not incredibly low. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave these on down here. Four of these washers is exactly a half inch. So I'm gonna go with taking seven washers out. That'll be just shy of one inch drop. And what you do is you just move them from the top to underneath this top hat. Okay, so with just the top nut removed, we've still got the camera plate bolted up in there, but the suspension is now free. Now this thing doesn't really wanna come down much, even when I put my weight on it, but there is enough room that I can Get that camber plate off, removed. That way I can drill out the hole. Okay, so we've got all our washers off. So we used to have all of the washers on top. We're essentially just moving them below, still stacked on top of the strut, and then one washer on top. And there we go. Uh, now I'm gonna drill the hole in the strut tower and we'll get it back together. So you see how these pieces, we've slid this all the way up close to the single point out here, which is the inside of the strut tower, as far as it'll go, but there's more adjustment. So on the other side, you see there's, there's two more points. So you can move this pair down to the center two, or if you want to go all the way down to here. Now I'm just going to go to the center two here but once this is cut out, I can make small adjustments right from the top without having to disassemble everything, which was the whole intent of the design. All right, there it is after the initial cut. I'll make some small cuts straight in just on this lower part, try to break those pieces out, and then I'll just go around and clean up the edge with a little grinder. I found some bump stops from Energy Suspension. So I'm gonna put those in there. Camera plate cannot go on first. There we go. So here are some photos of what it looked like when I was done. Um, in that setup is where I had only two washers on top, so it gives this ride height. And at this ride height is where I finally went and got my alignment done. Okay, now let's go over the cost to build all of this. Uh, so let's start at the top. Uh, camber plates, the lowest price I found and what I got were Silvermine Motors for 180 there's also a very similar looking set on eBay for 180. Washers. I ended up using 16 washers total. I went ahead and bought a box of 20, uh, what are they, 3 fourths inch 
zinc plated Hillman flat washers from a hardware store. I happen to get mine from Lowe's. It's $9 for a box of those. Uh, strut inserts. I bought a brand off Amazon that no longer exists anymore. So I guess I won't even mention them. They was sort of an experiment. Um, but KYBs are sort of a, a good go-to. Um, they're good for daily driving, sport driving, even maybe some autocross. They're not incredibly stiff. They're not the best for racing, um, but they're also available and coming at a really good price, about $100 a pair. You can get cheaper strut inserts from Rock Auto. Um, if you're really looking to build it at the lowest cost possible, you can get some strut inserts for $60 a pair. I wouldn't really recommend that for a lowered car. Uh, the top hats, they came with the springs that I threw in the trash and those threaded sleeves I threw in the trash. So you get your top hats and those little lower spring perches. Um, the whole kit, 40 bucks, free shipping off eBay. The top hats are simple design. Um, they are listed for a 1988 through 2000 Honda Civic. They are still available for that price. Uh, the springs themselves, I got those from Summit Racing. They're a brand called Landrum. Uh, Landrum coilovers are $80 each. When I bought them, they were only $50 each. So that was a couple years ago. The price has already gone up. They are 2.5 inch inside diameter, 10 inch long. Uh, the ones I bought are 225 pound. I would recommend going at least that stiff. Um, I did some research and decided on 225 thinking that was going to be not too stiff. It's actually a little soft in my opinion. So I would recommend 275 even for just a casual weekend driver. Um, the pipe clamps, those are from a company Fastenal. Um, I had been watching those for some time. They're normally anywhere from $25 to $35. I happened to get them on sale, I think for $17 each. You need two of them, one for each side. They're currently $36 each, so that kind of pushes the price up a little. They are two and one eighths inch. Um, with how snug they fit, I'm kind of guessing that you might even be able to use two and a quarter inch, which is one eighth larger diameter, inside diameter than what I bought. So you can watch the prices on both the two and an eighth and the two and a quarter. Although I'm not 100% sure the two and a quarter is going to be snug enough, I'm thinking it will be. At today's prices, without any sale prices, that's looking about $561 for the front pair put together. And that gives you the strut insert itself, and that is a kit that you can put on without welding. Now, if you were to try to get it the lowest cost possible, let's say you bought um, a lower cost pair of front struts, and you got cheaper coilover springs on Summit Racing, you can actually buy Summit Racing's own brand of coilover springs. Those can be had right now for $50 each. So you can save some money there. And let's say you found pipe clamps for a little bit lower cost. You're looking at roughly $420 to $430 there. So that's about as cheap as you can go right now. The car does ride fine. Um, I've been I've taken it for probably a thousand miles since I've actually installed these three months ago. So and it's still working great. Um, I hope this information can give you some ideas on your build and you can decide what you want to do with this.